the whole notion that a child born in San Jose or in Richmond or the East Bay, a mere stone's throw from Silicon Valley, wouldn't have access to the amazing innovation that's created here on California soil should be a crime. Closing the digital divide is a fundamental civil rights issue from my perspective. In 2007, large numbers of our rural communities had no access to high-speed internet service, and major segments of California's population were not connected at home. In 2008, 55% of Californians were connected at home, the same as the national average. But only 33% of low-income households, 34% of Latino families, and 36% of people with disabilities were connected. There still is the equivalent of six states on the East Coast uh, that are unserved in California. Many of our telecoms are, are reluctant to go out into our rural areas. If you go out to King City in the Salinas Valley, there is no Comcast, there is no AT&T, there is satellite. That's $90 a month. 768,000 households, 2.2 million people, had no access to broadband infrastructure. The population of the state of New Mexico spread out over 44,000 square miles, the size of the state of Kentucky. Almost 13 million people were not online at home, greater than the total population of the state of Illinois. We're talking about people in areas in center cities where there's poverty. In Los Angeles County, the most populous county in the nation, less than half the residents were connected. 1.9 million people with disabilities were not connected. The population of Nebraska. The road to independence and the road out of poverty for any community is the ability to find employment. And if we don't have access to the internet, we're not gonna get there. People who use the internet to find a job find that job much more quickly than people who don't, and they keep that job much longer than people who don't. There are areas in tribal communities that still don't have telephone, that still don't have electricity in this state. Um, so we have a long road to get you know, some of those communities online. 680,000 Native Americans were not connected, the population of Vermont. More Native Americans reside in California than any other state, mostly in urban, poor neighborhoods. California has 109 federally recognized tribes, many with remote tribal lands with little broadband infrastructure. We have, um, you know, our tribal communities. We have our unserved and underserved communities. And trying to really reach out to those communities is really difficult. We really need to focus on how are we going to get um, additional funding? How do we really work together? If you only could invest in one thing to help rural areas, what would you invest in? And my answer was rural broadband infrastructure. Technology is going to help farmers get through the drought, deal with climate change, strengthen the environmental footprint of agriculture, and increase profits. It's actually how we're going to feed the world. The governor and legislature formed the California Broadband Task Force. The California Public Utilities Commission established the California Emerging Technology Fund as a public benefit from mergers in 2005. Together, California leaders developed a plan for action. The California Emerging Technology Fund is a unique organization in the nation. Only California has a statewide nonprofit with the mission to close the digital divide by addressing the challenges of both supply and demand of broadband infrastructure to accelerate the use of technologies enabled by high-speed internet access. One of the most important roles that CETF has served is to really bridge a policy and practice to extract public benefit from the mergers of telecommunications companies and make sure that that public benefit goes to communities most in need, low-income communities, multilingual communities, immigrant communities, to bring the benefits of digital learning and digital connectivity to children, families, parents, and workers. It is the role of CETF to narrow that digital divide and make sure that everybody has access to technology. CETF has really provided that blueprint. Uh, it's brought amazing teams together 
uh, it really has made the impossible possible when it comes to uh, deploying broadband to areas that uh, just really were not even on the map for, for elected officials and policymakers. Lots of people talk about using metrics, but it's really hard to ask, are they doing what we're hoping they're going to do? Are they reaching those outcomes? CETF has really walked the walk and, and is absolutely a national leader. We set overall big goals to achieve in a decade of deployment of broadband to 98% of all households and adoption by 80% of all households so that four-fifths of all Californians would have high-speed internet service at home. The most important accomplishment for CETF has been educating the public and communities and the individuals about how important it is to have access to broad broadband. I feel that their most significant accomplishment has been to bring access to computers and access to technology to inner city schools, as well as ensuring that public housing buildings are also wired for the internet. That's part of our smart housing strategy. CETF has convened people, has leveraged resources, and has moved projects forward that never would have happened if we didn't have an organization that was solely focused on bridging the digital divide in the state of California. CETF gives us great technical assistance, advice, news. They provide model programs, they provide model policies, and stress the importance of having strong broadband capacity and speed to spur economic development and job creation. More than $30 million in grants to 100-plus community-based organizations. 800,000 people trained in digital literacy and workforce skills. 250,000 low-income households signed up for broadband. CETF has become the voice of California for broadband and for bridging the digital divide. It is creating enough focus both within government, within academia, and within civil society to get people to focus on what needs to happen in the world of broadband. In the last decade, California Emerging Technology Fund has launched the public education program Get Connected, sponsored Governor's Executive Order on Digital Literacy, advanced smart housing in communities, promoted broadband as a green strategy, and assisted the deployment of infrastructure to more than 110,000 households through the California Advanced Services Fund. We created and funded regional consortia that worked within their respective regions to address adoption and deployment issues. The California Public Utilities Commission has funded the California Advanced Services Fund, which really prioritizes getting uh, broadband out to rural areas. I think CETF's most significant accomplishment, uh, and because I have a soft spot in my heart for education, has been the School to Home program. The ability to provide training and uh, solutions to teachers and students, as well as parents, and actually have scaled the solution uh, to help manage and, and, and ensure student success. Telemedicine is very important to meet the needs of people in either remote areas or smaller communities. Telemedicine is an important way to enable access using broadband. CETF has been a leader in California in driving the adoption of telemedicine. The digital divide is, is still a very important issue uh, in California and I think nationwide, but the big issue is uh, from a healthcare perspective, if you do not have access to the internet, uh, you cannot access your pac patient records, uh, you cannot communicate uh, with your doctors, you cannot receive uh, virtual care. CTF has been a very unique public service organization in making sure that when there are mergers and telecommunications that some of that revenue that will be earned comes in to serve the public benefit, especially around this issue of broadband internet access. We received $60 million of seed funding from AT&T and Verizon. Over the last 10 years, through very aggressive financial management, which included uh, a very strenuous funds or matching dollar program, we have been able to turn that $60 million of fun, funds 
into over $250 million that we've been able to invest in California. The California Emerging Technology Fund operates very effectively and efficiently in the public interest. We matched funds, we brought in federal money, we brought in money from a variety of other sources, worked with other groups that provided matching money, and I think overall with hundreds of thousands of people receiving access and tens of thousands of people receiving training, we increased the size and the effect of our original grants. There are a couple things that really make the staff great at CETF. One is we all deeply believe in the mission and the importance of everyone having the opportunity to connect to broadband and connect in a way where they understand what it means for their life. There are still people that don't have access to broadband. It affects their access to health care, to education. You know, digital divide is such, a, is such a common term these days, but in reality, I think of it as a new form of literacy. The reality is that today, if you don't speak technology, you don't speak a common form of language. We all have to have access to that or we're going to get left behind, and that's really what's happening. Today, 87% of California households are online at home with high-speed internet service, although 18% have only a smartphone. Smartphones are marvelous devices for navigating the internet, but it is difficult for a child to do homework or an adult to gain workforce skills with just a smartphone. These residents are emerging as a new facet of the digital divide, the underconnected, and the digital divide remains the greatest for the most disadvantaged residents. 19% of low-income households are not connected. 18% of Latino families are not connected. 30% of Spanish-speaking households are not connected. 25% of people with disabilities are not connected. 31% of seniors are not connected. And 33% of non-high school graduates are not connected. Connecting California to the online world is as critical as the job of getting people connected to telephones and to electricity and to water systems. The internet is a social civil right. I'd encourage the state to continue investing in community-based organizations. Um, we've made a lot of progress with closing the digital divide, but now we're at the crucial moment where we're um, trying to get to the last 20 percent, and those last 20 percent will be the hardest to reach families. Over the last 10 years, we believe that it's important to document who has access to broadband, being technology neutral, but making sure that it's almost like a utility, that everyone deserves it. If they can't afford it, there need to be ways to help them afford it. For 10 years, I mean, that sounds like a long time, but it's really not as things occur, and it's going to take more than 10 years more for us to do all the things that need to be done and CETF needs to be a big part of that. A lot of that awareness is being raised, you know, by the work of um, uh, the uh, California Broadband Council today and organizations such as the California Emerging Technology Fund. California has the most diverse terrain, the most challenging deployment that you can possibly imagine. And so it is not a small task to reach our goal of getting infrastructure to 98% of all households in all regions in California. Government has to step in and try to provide uh, some assistance to those citizens that have been sitting in outlying areas for a long time uh, with really no internet service at all. This is money that's coming from fees on our phone bills. So it's easy enough to be able to get them to vote on this. They will empower their communities. They will empower all of us. Uh, to be able to have this important tool in the time that we live now. I represent a very large uh, assembly district where there, it's 25,000 square miles. There's very small communities spread out through that 25,000 square miles. We have very spotty cell service in most of our, my district and we have uh, very limited internet. So it's critical that California, if we're going to grow as a state, that they make sure that they're, they bring along the rural areas well, the legislature needs to get educated on, on how the technology works and, and what is being provided and isn't being provided around the state. I think legislators would be surprised to know in their district who's on which side of the divide, 
who has and, and who doesn't have. The major challenge in closing the digital divide is funding. Uh, and how do we get the funding to where it needs to be and how do we cobble it all together? We need to work as legislators in the state of California to identify those areas of need, find where the deficiencies exist and work expeditiously to resolve them through, through our work. Well, the major challenges happen to be that uh, there's a lack of investment. Um, uh, planning and developing the infrastructure is extremely expensive, and making that a priority seems to uh, not be part of the conversation today. I think the California legislature needs to prioritize investments uh, in parts of the state of California that continue to lack uh, broadband connectivity. Uh, the benefit from this will be not only seeing job growth, but also business growth, and at the same time preparing children for the 21st century educational opportunities. Closing the digital divide, there are, there are many challenges, but most of which is money. The legislature can do a couple of things. Number one, raise the profile, raise the level of awareness, not only in the legislature, but throughout the districts that we represent. Well, the major challenge in closing the divide is cost. We you know, need money to uh, do the startups and lay the fiber optic lines. Now, we need the money to speed up the lines. I don't think any of us who've had access to rapid uh, communications technology would go back to the dial-up days. The state has not done enough to make sure we're inclusive. A lot of kids are missing out on that. They go to these poor neighborhoods. They don't have broadband. They don't have cable access or internet access. We've got to change that. Although there have been impressive gains in digital inclusion in the last decade, too many Californians remain stuck on the wrong side of the digital divide. 43% of rural California has unreliable high-speed internet service. 30% of all Californians are unconnected or underconnected. That's why the California Emerging Technology Fund continues to work to close the digital divide as the sponsor and leader of Internet for All Now. The California Emerging Technology Fund thanks and salutes the community leaders and legislators who are dedicated to closing the digital divide in California. In 2017, the legislature overwhelmingly passed with bipartisan authors and votes the Internet for All Now Act of 2017, and Governor Jerry Brown signed it into law. It provides the foundation for working together to finish the job of closing the digital divide in California.